Welcome back to Diving Into Watches. Uh, when it comes to the Seiko catalog, the catalog is immense. And within that catalog, there are a lot of hidden gems that I think get definitely overlooked or, or, not, or, or, or passed over uh, just because of the breadth and the depth of the catalog. I think also too, because uh, YouTubers and Instagrammers only want to show the latest and greatest uh, models that come out. Uh, they don't tend to want to dive down into old catalogs. It's always the new stuff. But I think in the in the Seiko catalog specifically, there are a lot of great watches that just for whatever reason got overlooked. And that's partly on Seiko's fault because they just make so many. Uh, but one of the ones we're going to talk about is the Seiko Sport 5 SRPC. I think it's SRPC or SRP uh, 55K1. And I'll put the exact nomenclature down below uh, called the Big Orange. And there'll be a picture up here on either side of it. But it is a Seiko 5 sports watch, 100 meter water resistance, big orange dial. Kind of has, uh, I, when I look at it, I always kind of think of cross between a monster and a samurai. It's a big dial, but it's not a big watch. It's 45 millimeters, uh, uh, stainless steel bracelet. Uh, very, very, very comfortable. This particular model uh, is from 2019. It was a gift from a uh, combat buddy of mine that deployed with Afghanistan. It was for my, got for me for my 50th birthday. So, um, I will always hang on to this watch. Um, so, but I, when I was looking, looking at the watch I was going to review this week, I wanted to delve into some of the older Seikos that uh, even though they're older, doesn't mean that they're not good and that they shouldn't still be looked at. I believe this model is discontinued, but you can still pick up new old stock and you can pick it up on eBay, uh, for, for a good price. So this is a watch that I think is definitely worth looking at, especially if you're into orange face dial watches. You like that monster style or that samurai style watch. Uh, this kind of has the DNA of both. There'd be some, there'd be some complaints about it because it is not a screw down crown. It has a kind of a 62 Moz case uh, and that monster um, uh, samurai uh, bezel. Uh, but you, I know the people will complain and say 100 meters, that's terrible. You know, it's not a dive watch if it's not more than 100 meters. But folks, 100 meters is 300 feet underwater. I understand people wanting, you know, 150, 200 meter, 300 meter, but at the end of the day, how many of us are going 300 feet under the water? The average person who owns a dive watch is not diving with them anymore. We like them, we buy them, we wear them because we like that style. Uh, there are obviously people who dive, and I and I think when you get your PADI certification, whatever it is, the, the first level you get, you, you're not even allowed to dive below 100 feet. So most Seiko watches, even though it doesn't have a screw down crown, I would have no real problems diving with it. But most of us, it's the pool, it's, you know, it's some ocean swimming, maybe it's the light scuba diving or snorkeling. So I, I don't, I don't have a problem with it being a hundred meters uh, at all because that is actually 300 feet of water. So it's, it's not a big, big deal. So without further ado, let's get over to the bench. Let's take an in-depth, more closer look at the Seiko Big Orange SRP 55k1 and i hope i did sr yeah this srp or srpc 5k 55k1 and let's take a look and see why this is an overpass wa overlooked watch and one that you should definitely look at and think about adding it to your collection because old doesn't mean it's not good it just means it's overpass it's just was passed over and there's some good deals that you can pick up on this watch and add it to your collection especially if you're a huge seiko fan like i am so without further ado let's go take a look Okay, so here we are with the Seiko Sports Big Orange uh, SRP. Make sure I got that correct. SRP 55K1. Um, so before we get into the nitty gritty, the, the goods and the pros and the bads and the uglies, let's go over the dimensions real quick. Uh, the depending on which was, which website you go to on this one, it's either going to say it's 44 and a half or it's 45. It's I'm going to go with 45. That's what I measured was 45. So case width is 45 millimeters. It is a thickness of 13.4. It is a lug width of 22. So you can put a ton of straps on there and not have any issues with it. And it's a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. So it's an overall well-proportioned watch that's gonna fit a wide range of wrists and look very complimentary on any wrist you have. It is not gonna be too thick at all. It has a, it does not have a coin edge bezel. It has these notches on the bezel. Um, it turns very, very nicely. It's got solid click, solid uh, reply when you turn it. And unlike most, unlike most Seikos, the QC is right on. It, it lines up perfectly at the top. 
It is an aluminum bezel. It's got your 50 minute increment, uh, 50 increment typical timer. The dial is a brilliant orange. The indices are applied. The Seiko 5 is applied and then all other, the minute track, the sport and the automatic 24 joule 100 meter is, um, is printed. It is a sword hand and a dagger, sword hand for the minutes and a dagger hand, I'm sorry, <clears throat> sword hand for the hour and a dagger hand for the minutes. It has a white second hand and the indices and the hands and the tip of the second hand is loomed. It is a polished upper case. And then it has a brushed, uh, horizontal brushed sides. You can see that it's got some scratches because this is a well-worn watch. And then the, uh, also the tops are brushed and then the backside is brushed also. It is a metal bracelet, which is brushed. There is no polish on those. And the, the, uh, my mind just blanked out. The bezel is polished also. It is not a screw down crown. Um, it is a pull out 4R36, which is the day, which is the day and the date. The date and the day are uh, black with a uh, white, white, white and date, white numbers and date on a black background. So it shows up, it, contra it contrasts very nicely against the orange. The, um, this is your typical pin and collar on the bracelet. It is a, a push it is a clasp and then a double push uh, double push release the case not the case the um clasp is milled i'm sorry it's not milled it is it is it is uh stamped which is typical of all your seikos very rarely on uh, this type of watch are you going to get a milled clasp it has four micro adjustments so that makes it dialing in very nicely and then it is a seiko i'm sorry it is a exhibition case back um i always kind of laugh at the seikos because they're not the most fancy uh fancy movements as far as color and to look at but this one is an exhibition case back it does say 4r36 seiko and it gives you the water resistance and the stainless steel and then the serial number and they did a do a little bit on the rotor where it says 4r36a 24 joule and then the seiko time corp so they do do bling it up a little bit right there, but it's not, you know, a super impressive uh, movement to look at. Uh, I like it on the bracelet. Um, I will keep it on the bracelet. You could easily put this on the rubber strap, and I've seen photos on the rubber straps. The loom is going to be excellent. We'll do here. We'll do the loom in a second, and then we will also put it on the time grapher to see how the 4R36 is doing. It is just a really cool sports watch that has been overlooked. Uh, with this orange dial and the reason they call it the big orange is because when you'll see it on my wrist here in a second you have no problem seeing this dial the indices are very well displayed the numbers are very very large on the dial when i asked my wife what she thought of it she was like oh wow another dive watch shocker um, she did not like the big numbers she likes the smaller numbers on the bezel she did like the color uh, she did like the contrast, but she was like, wow, it's another dive watch. So as far as my wife is concerned, it's just another dive watch. I think it's cool. It's just very easy to read, very comfortable on the wrist, which you'll see in a second. But let's go ahead and get a loom shot so you can see what it looks like, what the loom looks like. Typical of Seiko, the loom is excellent. It's the Super Luminova, uh, Super Luminova Bright. So it's going to glow very, very nicely. You're not going to have any issues with the uh, glow uh, in the evenings, seeing what it looks like. The date date window is not backlit on some on some watches. You can you can see those those are glowed, but this is not. It glows very very well. It's going to last quite a while. But typical of Seiko, it's that their loom is outstanding. You're going to get no complaints there. They do have a loom by the three o'clock window. There is no loomed pip. Uh, it's just your basic indice loom. Uh, hour hand minute hand and the seconds hand are your looms. So no complaints there. There's no shocker on the loom. I think you'll be very happy with the loom and how well it turns out as always Seiko kills it with the loom. So let's put the lights back on and let's get it on this. Let's get it on the time grapher and see how this 4R36 is doing. But before we turn on the time grapher, we'll do a quick wristwatch check. This is my homage to the Seiko Willard that I built. Yes, I did build this one. This is actually a Seiko factory 
dial, which costs more than the entire watch that it was built onto. This is an Audi dive that I took and I bought because I wanted a loomed bezel and I wanted that turtle case. So this is an Audi dive that I took and I took out the uh, dial. I put in a Seiko uh, sport, uh, Seiko, uh, Seiko factory dial, diver's dial. And then these are Seiko hands and a Seiko seconds hand on a uncle straps waffle pattern strap. So it gives it that real 60s vibe in the strap and in the waffle pattern and then just the way that that that, that watch looks it's uh it's an nh35 movement or if it was an actual seiko watch it'd be a 4 or 35 but it turned out really really well and the bezel is really cool because it's loomed in blue and in the hands and the indices are loomed in green and it looks absolutely killer so i just love this watch so this is my homage to the captain willard so without that without further ado let's go over to the let's go over to the Time graph and take a look and see how this thing is, is doing on the time grapher. Okay, here we are in the time grapher. Uh, it is showing zero seconds a day. First test shows zero seconds. Second test is going to probably show zero seconds. And third test is going to show, let's see if it shows zero seconds. One plus one second. And then the final fourth test is going to show us. Plus one second. So it's plus one second a day, 274 amplitude. It is at a beat air of 1.4. This one get this watch gets pretty beat up and pretty it gets used a lot. Uh, it has been worn all day. But even with that beat air and that amplitude, we're still running zero to plus one seconds a day at 21,600 uh, VPH or vibrations per hour. And for a Seiko, uh, that is absolutely outstanding for a basic NH35 movement to see zero seconds a day. And I haven't even regulated this one. Now it's clicking three seconds. So depending on where it's at, but overall, this is running very, very, very well for a five-year-old watch. It's never been regulated, never been set. And that think that speaks to the beauty of how a Seiko is as far as just, it's a watch that you can just abuse on and it's always going to keep functioning. So with that, let's go back over to the de desk and give my niggles and my moans and gripes, and then we'll do a, we'll, we'll wrap it up with my final thoughts. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this one? I think overall, I think it's an excellent watch. I've seen them online. I think new, new old stock, I think they're in the 350 range. And then I've seen them used on eBay in the 150 to 170 range uh, in good condition. I, I, don't, I don't think you would be wrong or missed to pick one of these up. Um, I think you'd be very happy with it. Let me go ahead and throw it on the watch on my wrist real quick so you can see what it looks like when I mean that it has a big presence, but it's not a big watch. Here it is on my six and a quarter inch wrist. I have got it dialed in perfectly on my wrist, not too tight, not too loose. You can see that the, the face enabled ability to read that is just excellent. But sitting on my wrist, you can see it's not massive. It's no big overhang. It fits very, very well. Uh, so I have a six and a quarter inch wrist. So depending on your wrist size, this is going to fit a lot of wrists just right. I, I think they, they did an excellent job when they made this one. It's too bad that it didn't get a lot of... Uh, a lot of attention uh, like a lot of Seikos do because you get a nice big face, orange face, easy to read from any distance, but yet sits very comfortably on the wrist. It's not overhang, is not overly bearing on it and fits very, very good and looks good on a six and a quarter. So with that, I don't think you can go wrong at all. As far as complaints, um, I don't know if I really, I mean, I know it's a hard Lex. It's not a Sapphire glass. Uh, so I, I mean, that's not a big issue because Hardlex does very, does very, very well. Um, exhibition case back, that's fine. That's no big deal. Uh, Seiko's known for doing those. So, you know, that's no, that's, that's not a big issue right there. I don't think it detracts from it. I think it'd be nice if Seiko would step up their, their, uh, the look of the movement and, you know, just add a little more color to it, uh, than what they do, but that's okay. You know what? No complaints there. I don't really have any gripes. I know some people will gripe about this not being a screw down crown and being a quote unquote sports water dive. It's not a true dive watch. It has that 62 Moz case feel. Uh, again, 100 meters is 300 feet. I think if you're going in the pool, you're doing some basic snorkeling, surfing, mild scuba diving. I, I don't think you're going to have any issues with that. But I know that would be, I know that can be a hang up for a lot of people is that it is, is, is not a screw down crown and it is not a, uh, it is not a logo crown like typically most of the Seikos are. So with that, I don't have a lot of complaints about it. You know, 
the bracelet is typical of Seiko. They're not always the best quality. You know, they're stamped, but it does very, very well. You can see that it's pretty, you know, it's got some scratches on it, but it's held up very, very well for five years worth of, worth of use and, and wear. So I don't have a lot of complaints on it. I think when you buy a Seiko, you get exactly what you're, what you're looking for and you get the performance and the, the value out of it. You can see on the time graph for plus one second, zero second a day on a Seiko 5 Sport. Um, so I don't think you can go wrong with this one. But let's go back over to the studio. Let's give me my final reviews and we'll wrap up the review of the Seiko Big Orange SRP55K1. All right, well, there you go. There is the review of the Seiko Sports SRP55K1 Big Orange. I think it is a uh, underrated, underappreciated watch that you don't see a lot about from Seiko's old, cal uh, from their old catalog, if you consider five years ago an old catalog. Uh, but I would definitely tell you to check out one, see if you can get a hold of one, either new old stock or used one on eBay. Um, I'm pretty positive it's discontinued. I could be wrong. And if I am, someone will let me know down, down in the comments. Uh, but I, I think it's definitely worth one checking out. Seiko's catalog is massive. There are some great hidden gems in there. And I'm all for digging through these old catalogs and looking at some of these old Seikos. You know, I mean, five years old doesn't seem old, but in, in terms of how fast Seiko cranks them out, it's old. But there are some great, great watches, uh, especially on the JDM side, J J Japanese domestic market that you can only pick up over there that you can get through Amazon, Joma Shops, and a few other ones, or you can get uh, through directly through some of the JDM websites and pick up there. And there's a whole nother area of great Seikos to look at that, that are available. So I would encourage you to, to not get caught up in the latest, greatest Seiko that comes out, but go look at some of these, these hidden gems that have been overlooked and not appreciated or just underappreciated. And uh, take a look and see about adding those collections because it's a great way to add some great Seiko pieces to your, to your overall collection without dropping the money because it seems like a lot of these new Seikos coming out are just getting really expensive as they reintroduce some of their reinterpretations of the Turtles and the 62 Maws and some of their other ones. And they're not even a spring drive, uh, Type, you know, but they're getting into, you know, I think they just reintroduced the Marine Master and it's like 3,500 or four grand. So uh, Seiko watches are getting really expensive. But I can tell you, if I'm going to drop four grand on a watch, I've already got mine picked out. The Tudor Pelagos Black FXD green, green dial, green brace, I'm sorry, green strap with the uh, elastic strap with the red stripe, kind of the Navy SEALs version of it. Um, that's the ones on my radar. That's the one I'm saving for. So if I'm dropping four grand on a watch, I'm going Tudor. I, I don't know if I'm, uh, I, maybe one day I, I, you know, I could see myself, you know, I could, I could see, you know, maybe looking at a, a Marine master. I'd love to have one, but dropping four grand on one of those, that's a lot of money when there's some, just some really great watches out there. So, Hey, thanks again, everybody for supporting the channel. We're growing. Uh, we're off to a good start this new year. Again, we got some great watches lined up for you. Please hit that subscribe button. That's helping us push that algorithm out there. Give us the thumbs up and the likes. Comment in the sections. I try to I try to reply to every single comment I get, uh, negative and good. You know, you know, all comments help the system. All comments help the channel. So I embrace even the negative comments. You know, so uh, you know, again, this is just some old combat vets. You know, YouTube channel talking about watches he loves and now in retirement. And I, I hope you share the same passion I have for him. And I appreciate every one of you who are following us on this journey. Uh, I think it's always fun to be when a new channel starts that you really like, and you're like one of the first ones to be in with it. And you watch that channel grow and you watch from the first video on how much it has changed. And there's some great YouTube video guys I watch out there in the car world and how much their channels have grown organically. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, if there's any watches that you think we should be looking at, again, you know, put them down in the comments. We'll try to get our hands on them. We've got a lot of friends. We've got a lot of watches. We've got some great ones lined up. Uh, also, we're going to bring in some um, different Omegas to take a look at that are really cool. And it's not the Speedmaster. Oh my God, not the Speedmaster or the James Bond, you know, 007 watch. We're, there's some really great Omegas out there to take a look at. So we're going to kind of bring in some higher end pieces just to look at. But we're trying to bring different ver different uh, variations into it. Thank you again. You guys have a great weekend. You stay safe. And until next week, I'm diving into watches. You all be kind to each other. And we'll see you next week. And I'm out.